On a clear day in 1983, the better part was born. Its mission was to provide entertaining and informative programming on topics of interest to the Bay Area community. Let us take you on a wonderful journey through the show's growth as it became an award-winning example of public access television. Stay tuned to learn how you can join in this effort and make your voice be heard. Welcome to The Better Part, a program that encompasses a diverse spectrum of topics important to our community, which we hope will both inform and entertain you. We invite you to sit back and enjoy the program. We are the presenters of the Better Parts 1000 program. Hello, I'm Diane Sparks. I'm Renu Kosla. I'm Beverly Siegel. We have all been members of the Better Part for over a year. We are so excited about our show today because it is about how we started, who we are, and the accomplishments of this group of volunteers. Coming up next are six longtime members of the Better Part who will each share a clip from one of their favorite programs. I'm Marilyn Priyal, and I've been doing television with The Better Part for 15 years. I've had lots of fun making many lively programs at museums, festivals, and events. I've interviewed lots of people who have endured and overcome catastrophes, really. Yet my favorite is a simple American story about retired senior federal judge Robert P. Aguilar. He is one of 11 children from immigrant parents. All of the children worked hard growing up, put themselves through college, and became professionals. It has been a lifelong objective of Judge Aguilar to help other people who struggle. I especially love what he says on this particular program about the opportunities in America. What do you think of America? Well, there is no place like America. I've been all over the world. I've been very fortunate. As a lawyer, I made a good living. As a judge, I made a living wage. Federal judges are grossly underpaid. Judges of any kind are underpaid. As a lawyer, I made far more money than I ever made as a judge. But I was able to travel the world, and I, I've been in impoverished countries. I, I've been in Paris eight or nine times, and that's the lavish life. But to live as a citizen and to have an opportunity to advance as a human being, there is no country like this country. Hi, I'm Myrna Gelfman, and I've been aboard the better part for about uh, 15 years. I've learned a lot. I've hosted, I've produced, and I've loved every minute of it. This show, 55 Alive, I'm very proud of this show. It's all about learning the new rules and techniques of driving. I highly recommend this course to everyone who drives. Our guest, Richard Cole, was the instructor at the Cupertino Senior Center but the program is available at many facilities. I know I got these inquiries from AARP asking me to attend a course that at that time was called mm -hmm. 55 Alive Mature Driving. I attended the course and found out that the reason I was asked to attend was to monitor it to see if I would really still be interested in becoming an instructor. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I was uh, trained to be an instructor mm -hmm. and I've been doing it now for about five and a half years. Hello, I'm Ernie Piney of The Better Part, and during my 15 years with The Better Part, we've created three shows with World War II B-29 pilot Harry Shangan and hostess Marilyn Priel. Our first of three shows was titled B-29 Pilot. Captain Shangan describes how his desire to help his country during World War II led to learning to fly bombers and drop bombs over enemy targets. I learned much about the Pacific War while producing these three shows. 
All three shows have received wide recognition, including submission to the Smithsonian Institution and many Air Force Museum. Hello, I'm Marilyn Priel, your host for this show. Our guest is a former World War II B-29 pilot, a historian. Please meet retired Captain Harry Shangan. Welcome, Harry. Hi. Maybe I can help you recall a few memories of about 50 years ago. Might interest the audience, too. I'm Billy Atwood, and I've been with The Better Part for 22 years. This show is about an ancient Stone Age calendar called Stonehenge, which was built in southern England. Our director, Marilyn Priel, instructed me how to enter the scene, which uses a green curtain technique, much like current TV reporters use, to show weather maps in the background. Stonehenge, as it appears today, contains many stones weighing up to 70 tons. The show explains how they were shaped and moved from quarries located miles away. ...to this subject and attempt to unravel some of its most intriguing mysteries. Hello, I'm Billy Atwood, your host. Our guest is an amateur astronomer, renowned eclipse chaser, telescope builder, author, and knowledgeable about Stonehenge. Please meet Ernie Paini. Welcome, Ernie. Hi, I'm Carl McCann. I'm in my 13th year with the program and the better part. During the 2005 holiday season, following the 9-11 attack, I produced and hosted a program promoting enduring peace. The program featured a rabbi, an imam, and a Catholic priest all on the stage together. We used special features to enhance the presentation, including a bird's eye camera overhead, and for the first time, background music in addition to and other than our theme music. And inclusiveness, shutting out hate, and those who mean us ill. Tonight, we have three distinguished guests representing three religious faiths who are here not to proselytize, but to suggest ways in which we can be part of a world community where each of us can experience freedom and justice for all. Hello, I'm Diane Benedetti, and I've been with The Better Part about 16 years. I had the privilege of hosting shows that Ernie Paini produced about gardening. Master gardener Sharon McRae was our great guest for about a dozen nature shows. We three worked together on gardening shows such as composting, dirt, bugs, herbs, houseplants, habitat, frogs, and invasive plants, otherwise known as weeds. Sharon told us about the many different kinds of roses, and I went around my neighborhood filming the local varieties. We even went to the San Jose Rose Garden in the winter so Sharon could demonstrate pruning of established plants. Sharon made a great guest. I'm glad to have been the privilege of working with her rose growers or flower growers take a, an antique rose, uh, a simple rose, and breed it for its best qualities, the color, uh, its durability as a cut flower. And so um, that's why we have apricot colors and uh, every year different colors. It's fabulous. As you can see from the clips, the better part has produced programs on a wide variety of subjects with very interesting people within our community and around the world. Now let's go to Renu at the Cupertino Senior Center. We are at the Senior Center in Cupertino. For the past 27 years, Cupertino Senior Center has provided the better part with the space and support to make our TV productions possible. Follow me and I'll take you to where all the action begins. Every Tuesday morning, the team meets in the Oak Room to plan the upcoming programs. Let's drop in and see the Better Part meeting in progress. Okay. Nine ninety one. With Bill and Rod. Yeah. Well, right now we have two people for camera: Ernie and Jerry. 
and we have Chuck for the switcher. Do we need a teleprompter? Yes. Okay. So everything else is up for grabs. The Better Part has produced many award-winning shows. We are very proud to introduce some of the winners. We have here Val Jeffrey, Ernie Faini, Diane Benedetti, and Marilyn Priel. Well, you won several awards. Tell us briefly about one of them and what it represents. A very special award that I had was a finalist, not a winner. And it's, it, is it Alzheimer's? And it's special to me because Carter Wells was a member of the better part and he had Alzheimer's. And when he passed away, his wife, Marjorie, asked us to make a program to help identify the symptoms early. She thought that was the key. And she was right, because I saw symptoms in a really dear friend of mine because of that. Ernie, you won the first place Wave Award in 2008 for producing Putting the Cart Before the Horse. What was your first reaction when you learned about winning this award? I was tickled to death for winning it. And Val was the person that actually won it for me. No, it was Ernie. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the story behind putting it, the cart before the horse is when we were writing these books for my Eclipse expeditions, uh, I used to tear my English and my grammar all apart, you know. So my editor, Joe Heim, would take it and he put the cart back of the horse where it belonged. Diane, you won a Crest Award. What is a Crest Award? A Crest Award is given by the city of Cupertino, and it says Cupertino recognizes extra steps taken. I'm very proud of this award, and it was given to me when I was executive producer of the group, and one of the gals wrote it up and submitted it, and that's how I won the award. Thank you. And Marilyn? What award would you like to speak about? Well, I decided to bring this one uh, because uh, I did it about our 500th program in our group, and since we're doing the 1,000s, I thought it would be fun. And also, uh, in the days that we were doing these, we only had one entry per year. Our group would select, out of all the shows that had been produced, one program to enter. And we've come a long way, babies, because now all of our producers can enter as many programs as they want and put them into a number of categories for each show if they want. And uh, it's much more democratic. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. This is the technology room at the Senior Center. In this corner, we have members using the club computer. It looks like they're editing a new program. When you're editing a program, uh, this is your interview that's going on, and this is an additional picture which is handy to drop in because it gives it just a little more color and makes it just a little... Here at the entrance to the Senior Center are some of the wonderful staff and volunteers. We thank you all very much for all your help. You're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, Action, okay, Diane. thanks. Yeah, uh huh. We would like to express our gratitude to the city of Cupertino for their continuing support of our efforts and the Telecommunication Information and Communication Commission for their many years of support. We would not be here without you. Here we are at Cupertino City Hall with Rick Kitson. He is the Public and Environmental Affairs Director and a member of the TIC Commission. Hello, Rick. Hello. Why is it so important for the city of Cupertino to support community television? Well, in Cupertino, we've had a wonderful tradition of having civic engagement, having the community involved in defining, articulating what the issues of concern are for our community. And so it has been community television that has done this most consistently and most effectively over the years. It's much like desktop publishing. We all have quite a few tools now that are all very powerful in developing video, mixing music, doing any number of things. But like desktop publishing, it actually takes some dedicated people who know what they're doing 
and uh, dedicating an enormous amount of time to do it really well. And that's what we have in community television. We have an uh, enormous uh, number of volunteers, such as yourself, who uh, come out day after day you know, working in the community, amongst community members, and really giving a voice uh, to the many concerns that we all share as we live here together. We certainly hope that community te television will flourish for many years. We certainly need it to. I totally agree with you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rick, for being here today. You're very welcome. Let's go to KMVT 15 Studio in Mountain View, where Beverly is standing by. Thanks, Diane. We're here in the reception area of KMVT, where we'd like to introduce you to Brian Zabo, the executive director of KMVT Community Television where most of the entertaining Better Part weekly programs are produced. Hello, Brian. Hi, there. How are you this morning? I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Please tell us why public access television is so important to the community. Well, Bev, I think of um, KMVT as a kind of a Facebook, Twitter, brick and mortar video agency that can provide a, a town hall venue for uh, ultra-local citizen journalism and video. That's, that's basically in a nutshell. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you're passionate about something, you can come here and speak out to one time, or you can produce a whole series monthly for years and years and years, as, as the better part has for, what, 22 years, 1,000th epi episode today. So um, we're a nonprofit. Uh, all are welcome, zero censorship. Uh, Shows are produced here by community members on everything from politics to art, religion, uh, sports, what have you. Uh, we also have a, a wonderful professional staff who uh, train you, uh, who support you. We have uh, modern facilities, a studio, cameras, editing facilities. We have a mobile production truck. Uh, we cover local events, um, art and wine festivals, uh, holiday tree lighting. We cover uh, council meetings. Uh, we also have uh, extensive high school sports coverage, so we cover high school games uh, in the Silicon Valley. And all of these are uh, broadcast not only on Channel 15 and the three cities we serve, but also uh, on the internet. We have a YouTube channel, KMVT, and you can see most, not all, but most of our programs on the YouTube channel, and you can see all of our high school sports on our website fully. So it's a very exciting environment, and uh, uh, we, we have a great time, and so does everyone associated with us. Thanks, Brian, Thank for you. being Appreciate here it. today and it's being part of our Thousand Show. My pleasure. And thanks to you and your wonderful staff for all your support. We're in the control room where Better Part volunteers work behind the scenes to make each program a success. These are all Better Part members sitting at the workstation. We'd like you to meet Bill Mannion, our executive producer. Bill, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about how the better part began? Well, I'm told by people in the group that I can never tell a little bit. Uh, the little bit really is a student from De Anza College walked across Stevens Creek Boulevard into the Cupertino Senior Center one day back in 1983 and said, anybody here like to learn how to do TV studio production, I can teach you and we'll use the TV studios in De Anza College. Well, from mid-1950 to the mid-60s, cable came on board and cable was being regulated by the Federal Communications Commission and the commission mandated that every city who was franchising out the cable into that city had to support a program called PEG, P for Public Access, E for Education, and C for um, Communication. Cupertino City Council picked up on that right away, and in the De Anza studio, they funded citizens from Cupertino to produce programs for public access. 
So by the time 1983 rolled around, the city of Cupertino had been supporting public access for many years, generously supporting it. The people that joined the senior center went to De Anza, they saw the equipment, they learned how to use the equipment, and decided to form a group. And that meant elected officers, that meant bylaws, that meant uh, they needed a headquarters. And the Cupertino Senior Center was kind enough to order them a meeting room every week at no cost, and they've been meeting there ever since up to the present time. Why don't you each introduce yourself and tell us why you like volunteering with the better part? My name is Vesta Walden, and I've been with the better part since about 1992, after I retired. And um, the part that I like best is, I've done a lot of the things, but the part I like best is what I do now. I'm dubbing the master videos so that they can give them to the other studios that they send. This studio has the best facilities of any I've been in. Hi, I'm Judy London. I'm from Los Altos, California. And the thing I most get, enjoy about volunteering at The Better Part are the meetings with everyone together, the brilliant things people say, and the wonderful approaches to filming and how knowledgeable everybody is. And it's my hope that someday I'll have just a part of the knowledge that everybody there so experienced has to make beautiful productions. Hi, I'm Phil Lunderhan of The Better Part. I've been with the organization for about three years. I was first volunteered into the group as webmaster, and then I was asked to be a uh, guest, then I was asked to be a host, then I was asked to produce, and it just kept going on and on. It's great fun. I am now one of the uh, video editors, which is the more complicated of the things we do in the club, and we take all the pieces of the show, we put it together, and we make the final product. I'm Nick Zabo. I've been with the better part for five years. And my primary interest is in public uh, policy issues, such as healthcare. I have interviewed people from um, Finland, France, and Australia on this subject, and an American health economist as well. I feel that uh, participating in this matter is important to the public, and that's what public access television should be doing. I'm Jerry Oliver, and I've been with The Better Part about six months now. I'm one of the newest members. And the thing I like most about being with The Better Part is that uh, I've always been interested in photography and putting my photographs together into little home movies. But this gives me the opportunity to work with a group of people that, where we can actually build a, a weekly television show. I've never had that opportunity before, and I'm really fortunate to have run into this group. My name is uh, Chuck Johnson. I've been with the uh, Better Part for uh, about uh, 15 years. And uh, I'd say what I uh, enjoy most about uh, working here is uh, the camaraderie and uh, getting together with the, the group regularly and uh, uh, operating the various types of equipment. Hi, I'm Ron Moore, Ronald Moore, and I started with the better part in uh, 1996, and I've enjoyed every minute of it because I enjoy the people that I'm with, I enjoy the subjects, and I enjoy helping people by informing them and entertaining them and just having a great time, and we are improving continually, so it's a, it's a pleasure to do that. Hi, I'm Doc Stoxiadis, and I am on the KMVT staff as well as being a member of the better part. A year or so ago, I decided that I wanted to actually join one of the Access user groups, and um, having worked with many of them over the past 10 years, uh, I chose the better part as the one I wanted to join. And the reason is twofold. One. It's a very well-organized, very experienced group, and it has a lot of camaraderie. 
Hello, I'm Chuck Bedord, and to me the better part is like a childhood dream that's kind of come through. I grew up in Chicago where TV was king at the time, and I don't remember ever not having TV. Um, so to me, it's now being able to work with a group of people in television is fantastic. This is a, also it's a tremendous group of people. We work together very well. We support each other. And I think most important part is that we have fun in the process. We really enjoy ourselves. This is the studio set with special lighting and chairs set up for an interview. Here is where the action takes place in front of the cameras, creating some of what the audience sees in the final program. We hope you enjoyed this little tour of KMBT and will watch our future programs with an insider's eye. And now, back to you, Diane. Here we all are. Special thanks to the City of Cupertino, the Technology Information and Communication Committee, the Cupertino Senior Center, and KMBT 15. We hope you've enjoyed watching the thousandth episode of The Better Part as much as we've enjoyed producing it. Please watch our future shows for interesting topics, guests, and places in our community. If you would like to join our group or get more information about The Better Part, call us at 408-777-3150 or visit our website, www.thebetterpart.com. Bye. Bye-bye.